Hello, Alan Steady here with Firewalls.com. In this video, we will be demonstrating how you can utilize your Sophos XG Firewall as a mini DNS server. The Sophos XG Firewall has the ability to act as a directory server to service DNS requests. This can be useful in smaller deployments and environments where a directory service has not yet been implemented. This, however, is not intended for larger deployments and is not a solution to replace your current directory service. What this will do here is instead of having our users utilize a private IP address, we can simply provide them with a host name. We know how our users are, they typically remember names better than a long string of numbers like an IP address. This can be used both internally as well as for our remote access users, further simplifying the user experience while not compromising our security. To create a new DNS host entry, we will first need to be logged into the web admin of our Sophos XG firewall. Here in our web admin, underneath of configure, network, and DNS, here's where we can add our DNS host entries. Scroll down just a bit here and select the add button. Depending on how we're servicing DHCP really kind of depends on how we need to enter in our host name here. If our Sophos firewall is acting as the DHCP server, in this field you can simply use the host name. That's the actual name of the machine not in a FQDN or fully qualified domain name format. And I'll show you kind of the difference on how this will actually work. So in our first example here, we're going to go ahead and use a fully qualified domain name for our Sophos being the machine name. That's the actual name of the device, followed by our domain name. In our example here, we're just going to create one for firewallscom.local. Next, we need to enter in the IP address of the machine, which our host name will resolve to. So before we save this, I'm going to go ahead and open up a command prompt where we can run a ping test here and see that there is currently no host for sophos.firewalls.com.local. See, we can see here that our ping request could not find our host sophos.firewalls.com.local. So we'll go ahead and save our new DNS record. Okay, so now that that's saved here, what we can do is go ahead and pull our command prompt back up here and run our same ping test, where we can see that now we're getting a response. So our DNS record has been successfully created on our Sophos XG firewall. And so now there's a couple more things that we can do here with this, uh, depending again on who is issuing DHCP. If our Sophos firewall is issuing DHCP, we can actually use just the machine name here, further simplifying our user experience. So then they only have to remember the machine name instead of the fully qualified domain name, sophos.firewallscom.local. We can just use Sophos. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that and we'll come back down here to our DNS records and create our new record again for just Sophos. Go ahead and save that. And what we'll actually do now is instead of specifying the domain name within our host record, we could specify that globally within our DHCP server. So if we come on over here to DHCP and adjust our currently configured DHCP server, right here in our domain name field is where we can specify the internal domain name or our fake domain name, firewallscom.local. So we'll go ahead and pull back up our command prompt again here, and what this means is that we should now be able to ping just Sophos, which we can see that is also returning a successful reply. This can be especially useful for our remote access users, again, because we're not going to have to specify sophos.firewallscom.local to access our internal resources. What we can do is just say Sophos. However, there is one more configuration where we'll need to update if you are attempting to use this for remote access. So if we come over here to our VPN and show VPN settings for our advanced SSL VPN settings, we can again utilize our Sophos XG firewall as our DNS server. So here we'll specify our internal interface IP. And down here in our domain name is where we'll specify our domain name, firewallscom.local. Go ahead and apply this. And then there's just one last update, which I should mention, especially if you are looking to utilize the firewall for DNS, is under system administration in our device access, we will need to make sure that we have DNS enabled on all of the appropriate zones. 
So here we'll just want to make sure that we have DNS turned on for both our VPN and internal zones. And of course, if we're not looking to utilize the Sophos appliance for DNS for our remote access users, we will definitely want to make sure that we leave this disabled. And that's it. Thanks for watching.